Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nelly. This is the third video in the series of videos on empirical or simple gas laws. We talked about in the first video Boyle's law, uh, which of course has the following relationship, P times V equals a constant. That's what we call the inverse proportionality between pressure and volume. And then in the second video we talk about two related laws, which are Shaw's law, where volume and temperature are directly proportional, V over T is equal to a constant. And then we talked about Gay-Lussac's law, where P and T are directly proportional, so as P goes up, T also goes up, P over T equals a constant. Now we're going to talk about the fourth one of the laws that we're going to discuss, which is Avogadro's law. And Avogadro's law is unique because it's really not necessarily an experimental observation that he made himself, but the observation was made by Gay-Lussac that when you have um, <clears throat> gas product, um, the volume of the gas product that's generated as a uh, you know as a product of a chemical reaction between some other gases that are in the reactants seem to be related to the volume. Um, as simple whole number ratio. So the volume of the gas product is related to the volume of the gas reactants by fairly simple uh, ratio, whole number ratio. And this could be uh, illustrated by the following example. At the time uh, Gay-Lussac did the experiment, he found that if he took something um, that they knew of as hydrogen gas and he took one volume of that hydrogen gas and mixed it with one volume of something that they knew to be chlorine gas, what they found is two volumes of a new substance which is also a gas and that's hydrogen chloride. Now the usefulness of this discovery um, later on was realized by Avogadros when he said that these volumes, the volume of a gas, is directly proportional to how many gas particles you have in that volume. So in other words, one volume of hydrogen gas correspond to a specific um, number of particles of hydrogen gas and the same way with one volume of chlorine gas that corresponds to a certain number of particles of chlorine gas and that allows you to form two volumes of this new gas which is hydrogen chloride and that also corresponds to a certain number of particles of hydrogen chloride. Now the usefulness of this discovery is not realized till uh, again after Avogadro proposed this idea. Uh, as a result of this you can now come up with certain formulas. For example, at the time they didn't really know what hydrogen gas is, but you can say, for example, think of hydrogen as H gas, right, and chlorine as uh, Cl gas, okay, and then you form this product which is HCl in this case, which is the hydrogen chloride gas, okay. Now, but you see, if you propose these to be the formulas, then that wouldn't uh, match with the experimental results because if you look here it says one volume of this has to be mixed with one volume of this to give two volumes but in this case we our equation is already balanced in other words mass is already conserved so the volume can't be correct in this case because we got one one and one whereas the experimental result tells us that it's one one and two so based on Avogadro's hypothesis that this has to be the same as the number of particles, the volumes have to be somewhat proportional to the number of particles, you have to assume that the formula for these guys has to be something that will, when added together, give two volumes of this. So you want your number to be two here. So then the only thing that makes sense, of course, is to assume that these are diatomic um, gases, which people didn't know existed at the time so I'm gonna just put this as a subscript here so then as a result of this idea um, by Avogadro people realized that these diatomic species existed and that's how we first figure out the formulas for uh, compounds and these all came about from study of gases so Avogadro's law uh, a lot of time is written in this form V over N equals a constant, in other words the ratio of volume to number of moles is the same number for all the gases as long as you keep temperature and pressure the same values throughout the experiment. Okay, uh, 
v1 over n1 in other words you can write it again in, in different states for example different conditions so v1 over n1 equals v2 over n2 equals v3 over n3 is equal to constant really what that's saying if you think about it is that the volume of gas one you know per mole of gas one right is equal to the volume of gas two per mole of gas two so if i have one mole of gas one and gas two their volumes have to be equal to each other right v1 has to be equal to v2 and uh, it's true for gas three as well which what that means of course is that even if you have three different gases right helium argon and hydrogen for example if you have one mole of all of these gases their volumes have to be the same which is whatever this constant value is okay so that's kind of a unique thing you want to keep that in mind uh, as far as um, that relationship and this is really uh, this V1, V over N quantity is call, often called the molar volume of a gas because it's the volume of a gas per mole of a quantity. So that's often called the molar volume. We'll talk about this in a second for a specific uh, condition. Now here's Avogadro and, and the relationship is often given in this a plot that looks like this where you have volume on the uh, one side and number of moles on the other side. Uh, as long as you increase the number of moles, the volume will increase proportionally uh, along this line okay now um, there's a special as I said special set of conditions where people determine the volume of a mole of a gas and this is called a standard temperature and pressure condition often shortened as STP as some of you might know and um, this condition is uh, by convention is set to be 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere you can then, if you were to measure the, the volume of one mole of a gas at 273 in one atmosphere, you find that that number always uh, hovers around 22.4 liters, usually 22.41 liters is what it is, depending on how many sig figs you actually have on this. But 22.4 liters is usually the one that we use. And so when P is equal to one atmosphere, T is equal to 273, volume is 22.4 as long as you have one mole of a gas, okay? You can do a quick example, and this is to kind of show, um, you know, how, how these are related to each other. So, um, And I just changed the question real quickly because I think I realized that I put in the uh, wrong question there for the STP question. But this is the question. Experiment calls for four moles of CO gas, carbon monoxide gas at STP. What is the volume of gas in this particular case? Now that's fairly straightforward. So STP, of course, is um, we were just told earlier that at STP, one mole of a gas is any gas, right? Is equal to 22.4 liters. So in this case, we have four moles of a gas of CO in this case then you just multiply mole of CO 22.4 liters that's the molar volume at STP so then four times uh, 22.4 is just going to be 89.6 as shown here and so that's a fairly simple application of this idea of STP um, you'll see later on that we can actually do some uh, you know, fairly interesting stoichiometry type problem with Avogadro's law, but we'll save that for the problem sets in class. Okay, so this wraps up our um, discussion of the simple gas laws. As you'll see in the next series of video, we'll talk about 
the ideal gas equation, which combines all of these simple laws into one equation, and we'll also talk about the idea of gas density.